Hey friends and welcome to another episode of Team Jesus Outdoors. Hey, today we're going to try to answer the question, who would most benefit from adding a stabilizer or a hydrofoil to their outboard motor? And how can you best optimize your small outboard motor for maximum performance? This is the 14 Kodiak running at wide open throttle with no hydrofoil, no stabilizer, just the way I got it three blade prop and this is the boat running on pad after installing the Dolphin 275 here's the whole shot before and after the boat on the left just the way I purchased it and on the right with the Dolphin 275. Note the way that I bought the boat with the 20 horse four stroke Merc with a three blade 10 pitch prop, no hydrofoil, no stabilizer. The boat will not get on pad. On the whole shot, the outboard just buries the stern of the boat in the water and it never gets on pad. It's just not generating enough torque to create enough lift to get the stern of the boat out of the water. However, after I installed the Dolphin stabilizer, the old version, the 275 version, it did create enough lift to get the boat onto pad, which allows me to begin diagnosing the boat. Now I can get it on pad. I can start to get the throttle, that wide open throttle in the proper ranges. Now I can start putting a piece of the puzzle together. This product is a Dolphin Stabilizer, model number 275. It's a really old Dolphin, one of the early ones. And it can be installed without drilling any holes. I installed this stabilizer first just to make sure that a stabilizer was going to get it on plane before I went and drilled any holes in the cavitation plate. Once I was convinced that a stabilizer would in fact allow me to get the boat on pad, then I purchased and installed a Dolphin Model 440. While the Dolphin does require you to drill four holes through the cavitation plate, it really is a pretty simple install. You just have to be a little bit careful about your measurements. And then the install is really, really simple. All the hardware is included. So friends, let's go back to the question that we asked at the beginning of the video. Who would benefit from adding a Dolphin or a Hydrofoil or a Stabilizer, whichever product you want to talk about, who would benefit from adding that to their boat? Well, pretty much anybody who's running a small boat with an undersized outboard. Even a medium-sized boat, I had a... I had a 17 foot Stratus walleye boat 15 or 20 years ago with a 115 on it and the 115 was at the lower end of the 
recommended outboard size for that boat. But I put a hydrofoil on that 17 foot Stratus and that made a big difference in the performance. It gave me a whole shot that I didn't have when I first bought the boat. So anybody with an outboard that's at the lower end of the suggested outboard size for your boat. More commonly you're going to see this with 14 and 16 foot boats where your manufacturers and your dealers will often undersize an outboard to put together a cheap package. So on a lot of entry model boats, 14, 15, 16 footers, you'll often see that boat packaged with an undersized outboard so that it can be marketed at a really cheap price. So that is who is most going to benefit from a hydrofoil. If you're running a 14, 15, 16, even sometimes a 17 foot boat with an outboard that's at the lower end of the manufacturer's recommended horsepower ratings, and you're having difficulty with your hole shot, you are a perfect candidate to throw a hydrofoil or a stabilizer on your boat. If you're happy with your hole shot but you're looking for top end performance, then I wouldn't waste my time or my money on an outboard stabilizer or hydrofoil. That's more likely a prop issue. But the second question that we posed at the beginning of the video was, how do we get, how do we maximize performance out of a small or an undersized outboard. So by installing the hydrofoil, I have definitely improved my hole shot. I say that because when I first bought the boat, I could not get the boat on pad under any circumstances. Now I can get the boat on pad. I still don't have the hole shot that I would like to have, but I can get the boat on pad. By installing the hydrofoil, we've eliminated one piece of that puzzle, so now I'm on to props. Every outboard is going to have a manufacturer's recommended RPM range that that outboard should run in. Typically, you're going to see five to 6,000 RPMs or 5,500 to 6,200 RPMs, something along that line. And that is, where you, that is where your outboard is going to get its best performance. Do whatever setup you have to do to your outboard, be it hydrofoil, be it prop, be it trim tilt, but do whatever you have to do to set up your outboard to get in that manufacturer's recommended RPM range. In this scenario, with this 20 horse four stroke Merc, I really have pretty limited options. And now that we've got a hydrofoil on here, Really my only option left now is to play with prop size. And wouldn't you know it, there's Mercury only makes two prop sizes for this outboard. So I have a nine and a quarter by 10 pitch prop here. And I just talked to my buddies up at Anglers Marine and Taylor and they are ordering me a nine pitch prop by going a prop one pitch smaller that should allow the outboard to turn the prop at a higher RPM during takeoff on the hole shot and by turning the prop at a little bit higher RPM on the hole shot hopefully I can achieve a better hole shot. I may lose a mile or two mile an hour on top end speed but I really don't care about that with this boat I really just need to improve my hole shot. If you've got a small rig with an underpowered outboard, I would say the first thing to try is the cheap and easy fix. Throw the stabilizer on there, throw the hydrofoil on there. Second thing I would say, see what see what see what props are available for your boat and experiment with what prop do you need to get into the proper RPM range. Ultimately, the performance of your outboard and your boat are going to ultimately be determined by the design of the hull and how much horsepower you can put on it.
but throwing a hydrofoil on a boat or changing a prop out on a boat is a relatively cheap and easy fix. Especially these small motors, we're not talking about $400 stainless props. We're talking about $100, $150 aluminum props. And it's always good to have a spare prop anyway. So I don't mind having an extra prop at the end of this process. But hey, that's who can best benefit from adding a hydrofoil in between the hydrofoil and the prop, you should be able to get the maximum amount of performance out of your small outboard. Guys, thanks for watching another episode of Team Jesus Outdoors. Hey, don't forget we're trying to do the we're trying to do a men's weekend the last weekend in October. So you, if you're at all interested, if you think you might be interested in joining us on that men's weekend, you'll find my email address in the description box below. Get my email address, drop me an email, and let me know that you're interested in uh, joining us on our men's weekend. I'll send you all the details. Guys, last but not least, make sure you've got you and your family in a good church so that you can take your next steps with the Lord Jesus Christ. Guys, God bless tight lines. We'll see you on the water.